Hello everyone and welcome to the final sideboard of the Cincinnati Legacy Open. I'm here with Caleb, again. Howdy. Again. Yep, Caleb was over here earlier for a deck tech, so if you want to read all about this sweet, crazy brew, you can't. It's a video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go ahead and give you the trophy right now. I'll probably write an article about it in the near future. Uh, so. yes. uh, you can find that on Channel Fireball, where your columnist, columnist yeah, regularly true. posting a lot of strange Leg legacy decks. The legacy weapon. Legacy weapon, indeed. Yeah. Uh, a real life quote from the coverage of your finals match. Signet time is over, it's Karn time. <laughs> I just thought I'd throw that out. That's something I'm pretty sure I never would have thought I'd hear in Legacy. Karn is sick. How did your Signets and Karns play with you? I mean, obviously, you haven't gotten to play them now. You know, Scars is gone, so you can't really play these artifacts in the Karn strategies anymore. So now that you're in... You mean in standard? What are you yeah. talking about? No, oh. now you got to move your cards into Legacy. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. That's actually probably why I started playing with it. <laughs> Just like, missed him? <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the last uh, standard open, um, I can't remember where it was, where, where Scars was legal. I was like, man, I have to play Tezzeret at least once. This is like the most fun card in standard. And I like threw some Staff of Nins in there, and mm. I was like metamorphing Staff of Nin. It was the best thing ever. I even... I even uh, Illusion to uh, staff of Nin once because I like made the staff of five five with Karn so I could image <laughs> it. <and> like, <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, Tezzeret's like one of the most fun cards in existence. Sure, it does all these sweet things. It's really powerful. It's probably it's probably if you have a deck built around it, the, the most powerful Planeswalker. Um, I mean, except for Karn. <laughs> except for Karn, indeed. but they, but it's probably because they both eat other Planeswalkers. Sure, and sure. Devour them. I'm not one of them. They, they create powerful board presences. It's really hard for your opponent to right, fight back against one, an unchecked one. Yes. It's similar to a Jace in that once you start pulling ahead, you just keep getting farther and farther ahead. Right, yeah. yeah. All right, so obviously now you've got some experience with a deck that was pretty much a brew uh, going into the tournament, right? Um, there are some Monday Night Legacy tournaments in Chicago at, at Hot Sauce that okay. I usually play at. And we have a good group of ringers. We have uh, the Legacy champion... Uh, Chris Bergeson, who, uh, okay. who does alters at Star City events a lot. Yeah. Um, Joe Bernal is top eight at a lot of these opens. Sam Caputz, I always mess up his last name, top eight's a, a few. Um, Jeremy Stone, my roommate, has top eight at an open. Okay. Like, he, he goes to these, like, so it's like a slew of good players and then some more like casual types and we all just like uh, play a lot of legacy. And uh, a, a, few of us, a few of us were working on Tezzeret Brews, but I was the one who added the, the uh, Soul Ring mana base and focused on an emphasis on signets instead of sure. moxes to get the, the, the Tezzeret out earlier. Um, and they were working with Temporal Mastery, which uh, Adam Prozac did uh, a bit ago. He top 32 in events. Yeah, I think I recall that event actually. Right, with, also with Temporal Mastery in, in his Tezzeret deck. Um, and, they, and, both of the, and both the group that I was working with and Prozac had, were, were using like tops and stuff to set up the, the miracle. Um, but it's, it's not quite as consistent as the list I brought. No, it's sure. not quite as resilient. You feel like they're just trying to do a few too many things, really, and you it's a little kind bit of cute. That, that deck was good, but the way it won, like it would fall behind, fall behind, fall behind, yep. and then it would like play a planeswalker and take an extra turn, and then they'd play another planeswalker on the extra turn. Like they'd have three planeswalker okay. activations, and they would just like pull ahead very suddenly. Um, this deck's a lot different because it like tries to play a planeswalker on turn two, so it can just like <laughs> be ahead on turn two. So, uh, how many turn two planeswalkers do you think you cast over the course of the tournament? Uh, just curious. A lot. A lot. Not not a lot, not a lot, a lot. <laughs> Probably like um, two every five or six games. Okay. Five to seven games. That's I don't know. still a pretty a pretty stern margin, really. Right. Well, I mean, you have six soul lands yeah, yeah. and six talismans, and like you're more likely to keep a hand that can turn to a sweet planeswalker than not sure. seven four drop planeswalkers. <laughs> so. Okay. So obviously uh, the deck played pretty well. Do you have any changes you'd make right off the bat? Uh, Dread of Night was insane. Um, I'd probably add a third to the board. That's pretty much it. Yeah. All right, sweet. Deck sweet. Try well, it out. Uh, we've got a few questions for you. Questions? From the Twitters. Oh, my. If you'd like to be uh, quizzed. Oh, those people don't like me very much. Oh, well, I I'm sure these are fine. Ooh, not that one. Let's Caleb that D one. at, uh, <laughs> at CalebDMTG is my Twitter handle. That is if his If you would like handle. legacy updates and other random crap. Lolcats? Who doesn't like Lolcats? I do like Lolcats. I follow Caleb on Twitter, so, you yeah. know. How bad can well. it be? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, all right, so we have uh, Mill Me... 6HGG, something like that. Uh, <laughs> was Dredge or Reanimator a problem for your deck, do you think? Uh, I played Dredge once. Mm -hmm. um, it was Jerry Thompson. We were playing for top eight. Uh, I f first, I offered him the draw because I was locked, and if he drew with me, his making top eight would depend on another match. Yep. And uh, 
and he's like, uh, no, I'd rather play, which is which I would have have two in his place, um, and I beat him, and in game one, and uh, and then I offer him the draw again, and then he accepted because he was down a game, sure. which is reasonable, which I also would have done in his place. Yep. But it worked out for me. It did not work out for him. Yeah. Ben's he the breaks. Uh, wound up in ninth, as we know. Um, I played against. I didn't play against Reanimator at all. I played against. Um, Zombies, which is a graveyard-based deck. Sure, I, I remember watching that matchup. It was right. a camera match. Yes, I had I had time to find a Graph Digger's Cage against him, and then that bought me time to do sure. busted things. Um, so you think you have enough hate, probably? Uh, I don't know. It's hard to say. Sure, whatever. It's Why easy not? when you draw it. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> draw my, that, against Jerry Thompson. I, I uh, Tezzeret uh, plus, plus one mm -hmm. into uh, my one main deck, Relic, and that was quite good. Magic's a quite, difficult, difficult game. Good. Very hard. Difficult. Very hard. All right. Uh, Chris Pakula, <laughs> meddling mage on Twitter, uh, wondered about your lack of fan. brainstorms. Oh, brainstorm! I tested it. It was it was awkward. It makes you run a stifle, uh, not friendly mana base. So like rug gains percentages because sure. they can stifle your fetches all of a sudden because you're running enough shuffle effects. And then um, like chalice at one isn't nearly as good. And you really don't want to be casting Brainstorm in the early turns of the game. You want to be like Signet, go, or, or what have you. Uh, Thirst for Knowledge is just insane. It's a much better card than Brainstorm in the stick. I can see that. You only had three fetch lands, I believe, right? And right. I guess Tezzeret is a, sort of a There's shuffle, a couple of Solemns. Like, there's Tezzeret. Um, there's the one Trinket Mage. It's just not really uh, a shuffle-heavy deck. Okay. Um, but yeah, Tezzeret and, and the, the Jace work pretty well together. Like put two lands back, sure. Tezzeret plus one. Yeah, they, they need the help, so. They do. Uh, <laughs> our, our last question comes from Serenus X Tempest on Twitter. Okay. Was your beard crucial to victory? Definitely. Um, partially because uh, I don't spend time shaving, and the time I don't spend shaving, I can spend doing more manly things like playing magic constantly. Uh, not much sleeping. Mostly just magic. I sleep. Sure. Well, I mean, you do coverage. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair to say. <laughs> I'll accept that one. All right, we're going to go ahead and let Caleb and his car mates begin the drive. Oh, I don't assume. we have more questions? No, I think we out. have a lot more questions. We're, we're all out right now. <laughs> He's got the crazies. Well, my, my, my car is about to leave yep. me, so. All right, Caleb, thank you. Yep, Once for again, sure. Always a pleasure. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>